again. And a lot of times I feel like if God is telling him to say it over and over, that means somebody's not getting it. So I'm going to go ahead and say it here this morning too. He says, if Jesus, the one who paid the price, said that you are worthy, then you are worthy. If you go and you buy a car or you go and you buy whatever it is and you pay the certain price for it, you think it's worth it if you're going to pay for that. And it's the same thing with Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. There's no earning it. There's nothing we can do to work our way to that, uh, that moment of being worthy. No, he says, I die for you and I say that you are worthy. So you already get to live in that. You do not have to live in a constant of having to earn your freedom, to earn your worth, to earn um, your right to be my child. He says, you are my child already, and I love you.
Jesus. No one can love us like you do, Jesus. No friend, no family member, no mom or dad can love us like you do, Jesus. Every 
take your rightful place. Stand in the authority that I give you, church. Oh, you're seated with me right now, right now, right now. I'll try so hard to see it. It took me so long to believe it. And you choose someone like me to carry Perfection could never hurt me. You give what we don't deserve. It. You take the broken things. You raise them, raise them to glory. Hallelujah. Let's pray. To God, we thank you for this day. We thank you just for the opportunity to be here, God. Um, we just, I just thank you for each person that's here today that has come just to uh, start their week off with you, God. I just pray that it doesn't end here. I pray that this is just the beginning to a week of just desiring you, God. We know that there's nothing that we can do to earn your love, God, but you already love us, God. I pray today we would embrace that love, God, that you just reveal to us your truth, God, you reveal to us yourself, God, and we would just cling to it, and we would yearn for that all week long, God. I just pray now for the hearts of your people to be open to you, God, just to be, um, just to desire to know you more today. We love you. What's up? What's up? It's me again. I know. I know y'all probably want Scotty this week, but it's me again. He'll he'll start back next week Woo! if his knees can feel better. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Had to make fun of him going down the stairs. <laughs> and sitting down. Well, he was real, real bad. You should have helped me downstairs. Yeah. Those, not, not, not getting BC powders anymore hurting you. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, I, I, I just want to tell you, Caitlin took my, my opening line. You know, last night was amazing. Um, it was really good. Um, and, and like she said, I want to shout from the rooftops. Like, there was a girl last night, if some of y'all weren't here. Her name was Zoe. Her name was Zoe. And um, Luke was like, hey, Jordan, Scotty, come here. And we're like, okay. And Zoe was standing there, and she was, you know, kind of like Caitlin said, she was just ecstatic. She was just couldn't. She, she, she wanted to tell the whole world what, what Jesus had done for her. And uh, Luke said, tell them what happened. And she said, I got healed. She said that, that there had been a black spot in her eye for I don't know how long. And... Um, that every time she went to go have a test, they were like, I don't know, your vision's 2020. And I said, Well, now it really is 2020. Amen. Amen. Jesus healed her, and because of the grace that he showed her, she then accepted him as her Lord and Savior. So, all the money, all the time that was spent last night, if it was for that one very reason, then it was all worth it. Amen. Right? Amen. Because salvation is, is priceless. Just to kind of to kind of let, let, let you know, like, so we were singing Champion last night, and Vicky was behind us. She shared this story with us. She <coughs> was behind us, um, behind the stage doing the words, and we started singing, When I Lift My Voice and Shout, Every Wall Comes Crashing Down, I Have the Authority That Jesus Has Given Me. When I Open My Mouth, Miracles start breaking out, and I have the authority Jesus has given me. She said that the fence that was around Angie Grant started shaking. 
like somebody was up against it, pushing back and forth on it. Because the power of Jesus was upsetting some things in the Arkansas. We have the authority. We have the power, church. When will we start walking in it? Two very real situations. A girl was healed and then spiritual warfare was taking place right before our eyes last night. Open your eyes and see that Jesus is real. See that His power is real. And the power that rose Jesus from the grave lives inside of you. And you have that authority. Amen? Man, I'm going to get into something today that's really, really good. It's going to be in John 4. Go ahead and turn there. John 4. God gave this to me earlier this week. And I just cannot wait. I cannot wait to share it with you because some of you are sitting in this place today and you think there is no way God can use me. He's used me before and I've messed up or I've messed up so much He can never use me. But I want you to know today one thing that God uses the unexpected to do unexpected things. Amen. He uses the unexpected to do unexpected things. In John 4, we're just going to start with it. Let me get there because I haven't got there yet. John 4. Where are you at? Very, you're getting close. There we go. John 4. I'm going to pray before we start this because I just pray that God pierces your heart today with His truth. Amen. God, I come to you today and I just praise you and I thank you. Father, you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You have given us power to overcome. Father, man, no matter what our background is, no matter where we've come from, no matter where we're at right now at this point, Father, you are ready to use us. In your son's name I pray, amen. You see, the great thing about Jesus is that he is always pursuing you. Why is He always pursuing you? He's always pursuing you because He paid for that. He paid that price in full for you. And that price is priceless. Just like salvation. We're going to start here. It says, Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that He was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Though Jesus uh, Himself didn't baptize them. His disciples did. So He left Judea. To return to Galilee. It says. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually he came to a Samarian village called. Uh, Sakar. Okay. Near the field. That Jacob. Gave his son. Now I want to start right there. Jesus doesn't make mistakes. That's right. Okay. He had to go through Sychar to get back to his house, to get back to his home. Right? He didn't have a house, but back to his home. And he just happened to go through this very place because they had business to take care of with Jesus at that very place. I love what Caitlin said last night when she started. Not many people I got it right all of a sudden, but she was wearing a jacket. And in the blue light, it looked like it was a, a, a black light, and she was glowing. And she said, I came here to do business with Jesus tonight. Woo! How many of you came here to do business with Jesus this morning? Amen. Some of you are unexpected, like, oh no, he's going to ask me to do something today that I don't want to do, but get ready because, like I said before, he uses the unexpected people, the people that, that think that God can't use me at all, and he, he actually does the expected with them. Y'all aren't as pumped up as I am today. <clears throat> and I, we got a house full today. Man, you can't even... like We're touching bodies in here today. Don't. You didn't hear that. <laughs> Internet didn't hear that today. So, don't worry about that. <clears throat> it, <bye. clears throat> so... Edit. Edit. Edit button. <laughs> bye. So, it says... It says he had to go through Samaria on his way. And check this out. It says in verse 6, Jacob's well was there. 
And Jesus was tired from the long walk and he sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Now I want to go into this a little bit. Noontime, that's the heat of the day. There is nobody coming to the well at the heat of the day. Right? Nobody. They up in the house chilling in the AC. They didn't have AC back then. They had something on shot, actually. They probably didn't. But no one should be coming to, 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 to get water. They all went in the morning time to get water because it was the cool of the day. They got their water for the day and then they went back home. So nobody should be there. But Jesus knew that somebody was coming that had an appointment to do business with him. Did she know? No, she didn't know, but Jesus knew. See, some of us are going through things today that you have no idea why you're going through it, but Jesus does. That's right. And he, He's using it and He's molding you. You see, so many times we want to do, do, do a skip and we want to hit the fast forward button through the trials. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We want to hit the fast forward button through the hard times because they make us uncomfortable, right? right. But there's nothing about Jesus that's comfortable. That's right. Nothing about Jesus that's comfortable. He keeps pushing us out of our comfort zone. Today He's going to push you out of your comfort zone because some of you sitting in here today think there's no way Jesus can use me. There's no way. <coughs> I do this, I do that. I've done this, I've done that. If you knew my past, you would probably run me off the stage. As my best friend Cody could, could speak for me. I don't know why he keeps coming back, but he does. But really, if you knew the deep, dark secrets, you wouldn't even be listening to me. But Jesus has used the unexpected to do the expected, and I have no idea why. I thank Him. For choosing me. But he's also choose, chose you. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. And that's what we have to come to the grips with today is that he actually chose you as well. As it keeps going, it says, Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. Starts the conversation. Yeah. Jesus always starts the conversation. Jesus is always pursuing you. Yes. Yes. And like Scotty said, not only she's not just no regular woman, she's a Samaritan woman. Jews don't speak to Samaritans. But Jesus says, you are important. No matter what race, no matter what color, no matter what you are, no matter what your past is that we're about to find out about, right? right. No matter what the past is, you have a purpose. Right. That's right. You have a reason for being. Oh, man. Right. Whew. Jesus started the conversation. He at the time, he, he was alone. His disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised. She was like, whoa, 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 whoa. She said, you're a Jew. And you're talking to a Samaritan woman? See, some of us are like, Jesus, <laughs> you don't know who I am. You don't know, you, you don't know what I've done. And he says, oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. I know everything about you. Yeah. I'm the one that created you in the womb. Yeah. I'm the one that, that made you. I'm the one who said, I have great things for you. Yes. Yeah. And we're like, oh, Jesus, like, you don't know, man. You don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've... He says, yeah. He says, and, and you say, God, you don't know how many times I've been mad at you. 
You don't know how many times I've hated you because of things that these circumstances that have happened in my life. And he says, yes, I do. And I still love you. And I still have a purpose for you. And I still have a reason for you. You see right now, he's begging with you right now. I still have something for you. You can't outrun the anointing of Jesus Christ. I heard this this week and I mean it just boom. Scotty started preaching about 17 years ago. Some of you haven't known him but for what? A year, two, three? Just because you know of him now doesn't mean that he was anointed three years ago. He was anointed long before that. And you are anointed. And you have to accept that anointing. And you have to use it. But so many times now, God, like you don't know what I've done. You don't know the situation I'm in. You don't know the hurt that I'm in right now. How can I help you? God says, hey, don't push the fast forward button. Trust the process. Trust that we're all going through a process. Trust the process. And watch what beauty I'm going to bring. Mm. Watch what beauty I'm going to bring. And then she she keeps saying, the woman, you know, the woman was surprised. Like, the Jews refuse to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said, you're a Jew. You're talking to a Samaritan woman like Jesus don't know. <laughs> right. Like, he, she just states the obvious. Like, I, I, I'm this. And I, Jesus Jesus, like, hey, I don't know who I'm talking to. I know exactly who I'm talking to. She said in verse 10, or I'm sorry, I'll finish that. She says, why are you asking me for a drink? Why are you asking me for a drink? Hmm. Check this out. Verse 10 says, Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you, uh, and who was speaking to you, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. Amen. You see, so many times, we use our earthly and fleshly circumstances, and we're like, God, why are you talking to me? And He wants to say, only if you knew who you were talking to. Ooh, yes, yes. If you just knew who you were talking to. I am the healer. I am the perfecter. I am the one who thought of you. I'm the one who always thinks of you. I'm the one who thinks of the best of you. I'm the one who loves you to the end. I'm the one who went to the cross for you because I love you. But yet so many times we come up with all these excuses. God, and God, God, God. And he says, only if you knew who you were talking to. Why? Because we don't know Him. That's why we don't know who we're talking to. Because we don't know Him. Verse 11, But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said. See, she's starting to think like we are right now. Like, how are you going to do this? How are you going to heal this eye? You don't have no eye drops. <laughs> yeah. Huh. yeah. Yeah. You don't have no eye drops. You don't have no medication. How are you going to do this? How are you going to get water? You don't even have a bucket. You don't have a rope. And then God will say, this well is deep as you should know. Your, your ancestors are the ones who gave it to us. Right? When we get a circumstance with God, God, why? A few years ago, I didn't get a job that I knew I should get, man. Like, I just knew I should get it. Point blank period, I was the best candidate. The other guy was an old guy. And I was a guy. I was the one. I'm just saying he didn't have, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah, that's a good one. You know? I was like, I didn't get it. 
No, he was like 70. He was older than you. Yeah. Actually, my parents are 70. I shouldn't say that. Edit. Edit. Edit button again. But, but I just knew I should get this job. And I didn't get it. And I got mad. How many of us get mad at God? No. I know exactly. Like in my mind. Like, here's the box. And I'm like, man, I check it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, this is going to, mm hmm. And God said, no, son. God said, you don't know who you're talking to. I want to give you a job in a couple of years that's going to be much better than that. But we don't trust the process. Because we don't know who we're talking to. Mm. See, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said. And the well is very deep. Where would you get the list? Where would you get this living water? Where would you get these eye drops at? You know what I'm saying? You have no way, right? And besides, do you think your uh, do you think your great ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, says, How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed. How can you offer better? You see, we keep thinking that all of these things that we accumulate, how can you offer better than that? All of these possessions, right? How can you offer better than that, God? I'm coming to find out that my greatest possession is time. With my family. Because I don't have much of that. How many of you are starting to realize that your greatest possession is something other than what you thought it was? Mm. Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It says, He says, it becomes fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. And she's like, what? I've never heard about anything like this before. You see, what is He saying for 14? But, those who drink the water I give. Did y'all get that? He is the source. He is the source of the spring that bubbles up inside of you. And when He is the source, nothing can stop it. When He is the source, you see so many times we think that the energy drink is the source. Whoa. Right? We think the bang is the source. Like I thought for a few Sundays about a year ago. Man, I'd, I'd chug a bang. I'd get up here and I was banging. I was banging. You know what I'm saying? Right? We think that the husband or the wife is the source. We think the possessions and the money are the source. Oh, uh, 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 hey, let me get spiritual. Can I get spiritual? I'm going to get spiritual real quick. I'm not as fast as what I used to be. You can ask Kelly, I used to be a speedster. Real quick story, got to tell you because it's really cool. Me and Cody were on the four by eight hundred. Yeah, four by no, it's sixteen hundred. We all had to run two laps. Yeah, we had to run two laps, bro. Yeah, I know. I feel sorry for you because of all you what happened. So we're at the, we're at the state track meet because we're good. Okay, we're good, and. uh I'm running the third leg, he's running the last leg, and we're like in like, I don't know, probably fourth place or something like that. 
And I go to hand him the baton and I step on the back of his shoe. And about halfway through that first turn, he kicks it off and runs two laps with one shoe. Epic story, he came in first. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Hey, that would have made you a legend, bro. That, yeah, hey, that's a good movie. But let me get spiritual with you. We think this oil, a lot of times, is the source of the healing. Oh, no. No. It smells good. Yeah. Let's do that. Anybody else? Who smells <laughs> But we think that because it says anoint them with oil and pray over them, that we think this becomes the source. When Jesus is always the source. Amen. He is the source of the healing. He is the source of the joy. He is the source of the happiness. He is the source of the peace, the understanding, the knowledge. He is the source. But so many times we get this big head and we become the source. When he says, when you drink of the water that I have, that I have, then a spring will come up inside of you that I give. Oh, man. Mm. Check this out. So in verse 15, surrender starts to take place. Yeah, surrender starts to Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. Then, I will, then I'll never thirst again, and I won't have to come get water at this dang old deep well no more. <laughs> All right? Surrender starts happening. How many of you are at a point today, right now, where surrender is starting to need to happen? Yeah. For a long time, church, you've been preached this very thing. This very thing you've been preached, man. And you've been reluctant to surrender. You've been reluctant to surrender. That's what Jesus is saying. That's not me. That's just what Jesus is saying to you today. Today, the surrender has to start. In order to complete the purpose that He has for you, surrender has to start. you got to start saying, yeah, Jesus, give me some of that, bro. Hey, give me some of that. Because I want that. Some of you are running from that. And Jesus says, I'm willing to give it. I'm willing to give that to you right now. And so it goes on, it says, and Jesus says, go get your husband. So Jesus starts digging into the background a little bit to show her who he is. He is the man. He's like, I'm about to show you I am who I say I am. I'm about to, I'm about to prove to you that I can do it. I'm about to prove to you that I have that water that will never make you thirsty again. I'm about to prove it to you. Go get your husband. And she's like, <laughs> she said, I don't have a husband. <laughs> and then Jesus, you know, you know, Jesus always gets you. You know what I'm saying? He's always like, I know. You've had five. Right. You've had five ex-boyfriends. Right? You've had five husbands. And the one you're living with now ain't even your husband. And she's like, can I go back to the village now? <laughs> right? Right? Can, hi. She, <laughs> woo, she said, you're right. You don't have a husband, man. And then in verse 19, the woman says, Sir, said, you must be a prophet. So tell me why is it that the Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while well, Samaritans claim they hear it now. I think it's uh, Jerusalem, something like that. Yeah. Uh, where our ancestors worship. So like, then she starts asking Jesus questions that only Jesus is going to know. See, some of us are asking Jesus these questions. <laughs> 
Some of us are asking Jesus these questions that our friends can answer. You see what I'm saying? Some of us are asking Jesus questions that we go ask our friends these questions and they tell us what we want to hear. Right. Yeah, so we just stay in the same place we're always in, right? right. Because we ain't asking Jesus the, only, the questions that only He knows the answer to. Amen. Yeah. Good truth. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, true. So that's why we just stay right here where we're at. We don't move forward. We don't, you know, we keep moving backward because we ain't moving forward because when we ask in Jesus, He says, Ask Jesus today the hard questions. Ask Him the questions that only He can answer. And I want to tell you, don't listen to that little voice. Don't listen to the devil who's trying to tell you. No, 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 no. When He speaks, Scripture will back it up. When the devil speaks, ain't nothing going to back that up. You hear me? You hear me that? Ask Jesus the hard questions. Because that's what she starts doing. Well, why is this? Why is that? Jesus replied, believe me, dear woman, right here, he starts to give her a glimpse of who he is. Right? It says, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when, no, when, when, when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on the, on the mountain, on this mountain, or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while the Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. And then it says, but the time is coming indeed, it is here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him in that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And then in verse 25, the woman said, I know the Messiah is coming. The one who is called Christ. When He comes, He will explain everything like this to us. <laughs> you know, in verse 26, like, go to verse 26. I, I was reading this week and I wonder if Jesus was like, if Jesus was like, yeah. I'm him. You know, like, I wonder if he's like, I am the Messiah. Like he think whispers it in your ear, right? I'm the Messiah. Or if he's like, Hello, I'm the Messiah. It's me. I'm here. I'm here to do business with you. I know that you get that now, right? Like, I just wonder how it was. But that's, that's what's so cool about it, right? Like, I don't know. I just... I'm the Messiah. I'm Him. I'm here. You talking to Him. You've been talking to Him. Because I'm the only one who can give you what you're asking for. Oh, you see, so many of us right now, we, 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 we asking for something. We asking for something. And we asking everybody else but Jesus. Right? Man, we asking for happiness and we asking our wife and we asking our husband and we asking that money and we asking that car and we asking that, that job and we asking all these things for that happiness, but we ain't went to the what the source to ask for. Ooh, man. Whew. Do, do y'all understand what I do y'all y'all smell what I'm stepping in thing? Y'all smell it? It ain't the old. It's not the old. <laughs> you see, so many of us today, we're searching. And we're searching. And we're not happy. And we're searching. And we look, hey, I don't know how many times, as a preacher or as a pastor or whatever I know, I don't know how many times I have been told, you know, I just don't know what my purpose is. Like after a sermon like this, somebody will, I just don't know what it is, man. <laughs> you know? Uh, I don't know what it is. And they expect me to answer what it is. <laughs> Ask God what it is. That's right. And, and, oh, wait, 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 wait. 
So they come up to me. I don't know what it is. Can you pray for me that I will find out what it is? I think you need to lead that prayer. <laughs> right? I think you need to be the one that does that. Because we don't know what our purpose is because we don't know the source who gives us that purpose. Point blank period. Right? We, we, we don't know our purpose. We don't know our reasoning because we don't know the one who gives that reasoning. We don't know the source of the fountain that is bubbling up because you have no fountain because you don't know Him. And so we search and we search and we search and we, we ask and we ask and, and nothing ever satisfies because Jesus is the only one that's going to satisfy. So it, go, it rocks along here and, you know, then the disciples came back and they were like, whoa, bro, why are you talking to a woman? You know what I'm saying? A Samaritan woman at that, homie, like, what are you doing? Um, but that, but to check this out. They were all too scared to ask. Y'all get that? Y'all get that? You know, sometimes we think, you know, the disciples, they were very timid before Jesus died and rose again. I don't know if y'all realize that. <clears throat> they really, they were like, bro, like, we're about to sink in the ocean. Like, you've got to wake up, you know. And then they were like, look, I don't want to ask this dude. <laughs> it was almost like they were scared to ask him who he was at times, right? They were scared to believe who he was. And then when he showed them, then, oh, man, all craziness broke loose, bro. Like, and y'all know that story. Anyway, that's why I'll be here today, because craziness broke loose. When are we going to let craziness continue to break loose inside of us, inside of this church, inside of Benton, Arkansas, inside of this county? When are we going to allow that? Well, that's up to y'all. So, let's continue. Uh, anyway, uh, I love this part. It says, meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. We just went and bought this food over here. You know, like you need to eat. You're kind of being rude right now. And Jesus replied, I have the kind of food you know nothing about. You know, <laughs> last night was a late night. It was a fun night. It was an amazing night, but it was late night. And so everybody was like, text him, bro, I'm running late. My alarm didn't go off. No, you just turned it off 37 times. Because that's what I did. <laughs> and everybody's like, like, I'm going to let you sh and, and hate you text in my group. Hey, he said, I don't know what y'all gripping about. I've been high on Jesus all night. I only worked out three times. I'm not sure if I believe that, Steve. I don't know if I believe that, but that's what he said, so I'm going to go with that because it kind of goes along with this. You see, he says, I'm on some of that food that y'all don't know nothing about. Because when you start fulfilling that purpose and you start seeing people get reached for the glory of God, Amen. there is nothing like it. You want to hide? You want to hide? You, you want to, you want to, you want to, I'm not going to say that word. You want to hide? Start reaching people for Jesus Christ. Start, start living the life with Jesus and wait for two years and see how many people reach out to you and tell you thank you. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Live that life and st then start getting some of that in you. Get some of that Jesus high. And there ain't nothing else like it. And guess what? It's the same every time. As Scotty has said before, I've never done those things, but Scotty has. So he always says that the first time is the best time. Right? First time is the best time. Then you try to chase that ever since. But I'm going to tell you, when you get high with Jesus, man, it's the same every time. Amen. When something would do, when that girl, when that girl told me last night that she got healed, a hey, boom, and that her that, that she become a, a follower of Jesus Christ. Bro, hey, I'm ten foot tall. 
You are a part of that. You're 10 feet tall, man. You are reaching the king. You are reaching people for the kingdom of God. Man, dude, I love this. And check this out. It goes on. It says, uh, the harvesters are paid good wage and the fruit they harvest is, uh, is people brought to eternal life. Did y'all did y'all get that? I don't think you got it. It says the harvesters are paid good wage, and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. When you become a harvester, you're paid good wage. And I'm not talking about money wise. I'm talking about that. I'm talking about that mansion in heaven wise. I'm talking about that spiritual peace wise. Because some of us are walking around here so heavy that you can't even hardly really stand up because the spiritual oppression on you is dragging you down. The spiritual peace though that Jesus gives when you become a harvester <coughs> is a great wage. That peace that comes on you is like no other. You can lay down and go to sleep at night and, and go to sleep right. as I can. Woo! I mean, I can lay down. I'm out. Tara's, Tara's like, well, you were asleep 30 minutes before I was last night, so we'll get off your phone and you'll go to sleep quick. <laughs> She's not in here, so I can say something. <laughs> hey. What? Oh, I thought she was coming out. <laughs> I thought you said oh, I thought you said headache. <laughs> you know what headache means? And why does this happen every time I preach? Everybody just laughs. <laughs> so, anyway, it goes, what joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike? Sometimes you're just there to plant that seed, man. That's right. Sometimes, like, I planted seeds that, that I don't know if I'll ever see. I mean, I'm not in that life, I'm not in their life anymore, right? But I've planted seeds that hopefully there is a harvester that will be able to reap that harvest at some point in time. You know, I, I love that song, Thank You for Giving to the Lord. It makes me cry every time. Because how many people are going to walk up to you in heaven and say thank you? Uh -huh. Yeah. How many people? How many people are going to walk up to you in heaven and say, thank you for sharing that video about yourself and the struggles that you went through and how you gave God the glory because it made me stronger and it pushed me to follow Jesus. How many people are going to walk up to you and say, thank you for just living that life? Thank you for just living... Thank you for sharing Jesus with me walking down the hallway in school that day. Thank you for reaching out to me when I was in a time of trouble and you reached out to me and you spoke Jesus to me. Thank you. I want to come to an end because this is the part I really want to get to. It's in verse 39. And it says, many Samaritans from the village believed Jesus because the woman had said, He told me everything I ever did. When we dissect this and we look at this, like this, this woman was whoa, whoa, so unexpected. Like when, when, when I was reading this this week and I was studying... Like Jesus was like, I use the unexpected people to do my work. 
And he said, there's so many people going to be sitting in church Sunday morning that think that they are this woman. That they think that there's no way. That, 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 that they think there is no way Jesus could ever use me. I have done so many things in the past. I've messed up so much. There's no way. But yet Jesus has an appointment for you today. That's right. Amen. That's right. Jesus came through today just for you. Wherever two or more are gathered, in His name, He will be there. And He is here today. He's sitting right back there. Don't everybody look. But so many of you, dude, bro, I, I just ain't, I ain't, I can't do it. But what did it say? It said many came out, they believed Jesus because the woman had said it. Because the woman had experienced what nobody else had experienced. How many of you have experienced things that nobody else have experienced? And you're that one person that can help that one person that's going through the exact thing that you've experienced. Amen. Check this out. It says, when they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. They begged him. You are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. This was a bunch of Samaritans asking Jesus, a Jew, to stay. Because the appointment accomplished so much. Do you think Jesus walked through there going back home by accident? Do you think you were you're here by accident? I'm talking about in general. Do you think your life, you are here by accident? That you are walking this world by accident because you're not? Jesus has a purpose and a plan and a reason for each and every one of you. And but so many of us think we're this woman. Check this out. So he stayed two days. Long enough for many more to hear them, his message and believe. Check this out, man. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe. Check this out. Not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard Him ourselves. Now we know that He is indeed the Savior of the world. <clears throat> Musician John, come up. need that today? How many of us need that encounter today with Jesus? I mean, what are y'all singing today? Come to the altar? Come to the altar. Mm. How many of you need that appointment today? You see, Jesus used such an unexpected person to bring salvation to a whole, almost like a whole village. <laughs> what? He used a woman who had been married five times and a woman who was then living in sin with another man who he, she wasn't even married to. And what did he do? He used her. Why? Because that was her appointment. He went to the well at that certain time and at a certain place because he knew about, 50, about a quarter after noon this girl was going to walk up that needed Jesus. And not only did she need Jesus, no, not only did 
she need Jesus, but all those around her needed Jesus. Many, many times when Jesus saves someone, it becomes a chain reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Many times when G it becomes a chain reaction because Scotty gets saved. And he starts living it. And he starts keep talking it. Right? And his friend is like, bro, you got something that I gotta have. Quick story. Had a friend in college. Best partier you ever met. I'm telling you, best one. One night, Jesus had an appointment with him at a party. Yeah, Jesus goes to those two. He had an appointment. He had to get his attention. A guy threw gasoline on his leg, and they were at a bonfire. You can imagine what happened. His leg catches on fire. Burns almost all the way around his leg. Burns, I think, within an inch of having to cut the bottom of his leg off. Burns within an inch of that. Doesn't go any further. He played baseball with me. And he, uh, from that moment on, he was, hey, Jesus got his attention. He had his appointment. He had his domestic road experience. Let's roll. Never turn back. Everybody was like, oh, I'll give it six months, right? <clears throat> give it six months, he'll be back to doing what he was doing. No. A year later, people started saying, hey, dude, what you got's a little bit different. I remember going to a, a Bible study with some of my friends in college, and I really wasn't living the Christian life back then. But I call myself a Christian, right? Like most in here today, we Christians, right? We, hey, I'm in here, I'm in here, right? You feel me? I go to church. I went to church about once a month. I was a Christian. Grew up a Christian. You know, that's how I did. That's, you know what I'm saying? So we go to this Bible study, and the guy lead start, that started the Bible study said, I wanted to start this Bible study because Justin and Taylor... Y'all do have something different. Y'all do have something that I want. And I remember sitting there and my heart was like, Jesus was like, you ain't got me, bro. How many of you sitting in here today are that person that I was? When Jesus says, bro, you really ain't got me. I ain't got you. Today is your appointment. I pray that you come. I pray that you get it right with Jesus. And I pray that you never look back. I pray this five months from now, five weeks from now, that you don't go back to being the same person because you have an encounter with Jesus Christ. The one who can really change everything. Don't let your circumstances, don't let who you were. That guy's now an ordained pastor. But if you don't let his past and his circumstances of his past dictate who he was, then he would have never got there. But when Jesus comes on the scene, Jesus changes things. Jesus changes things. Jesus says, you are no longer who you used to be. For you are down with the old and up with the new man. And now you are like me. Amen. How many of you need that today? How many of you need that new man? How many of you need to leave that old woman, that old girl, that old guy, that old, that old boy right here at the altar? How many of you need to leave him here and rise up and become a soldier 
in the greatest army in the world, Jesus Christ won. Beautiful thing is Jesus is pursuing you. But the beautiful thing about Jesus is that you have a choice. You can say yes or you can say no. Now let today be the crossroads. We just learned about a woman who had no, 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 even thoughts about Jesus. Turn her whole life over to him. And then save a whole village. What are you going to do? God, I pray to you today and I praise you. Father, I thank you. I pray that your word spoke. Father, I pray that I did you justice, Father, that you that I did not allow any of my words to come out, but Father, but all of yours. God, I just pray that you pierce the hearts of your people, Father, for surrender today. God, that no matter what they are, no matter who they are, no matter what they've been through, no matter where they're at right now, Father, no matter what situation they're in, right now, you can pull them out of them. And you can use them right now.
few announcements here, so I'll try to get through them as quick as possible. Britt, can you put a, a bucket? Yeah. You got a bucket? I got one. Perfect. Um, uh, well, there's, there's one. Uh, offering, there's a bucket over here, and the bucket's at the corner of the Walker Center for offering. Or you can go online at tcab.online. Also, Britt, back there in the very back, is giving a... We're giving a love offering to Scotty and Vicky to help them pay with medical pay medical bills. <coughs> Sorry. So today's the last day for that. So uh, the bucket's back there in the very back. Yeah. Church. Yeah. If you're writing the check, make it to the church because we're cutting on my check. So yeah, make it to the church. Um. Oh. <coughs> man. Ah. Sorry. What? Oh, thank you, man. Um, meal train, we're doing a meal train for Miss Gail Williams. Um, if you want to sign up for that, please get a, a, a Jay. She'll share the, the stuff with you. Um, so Jay, wave your hand real big. That's her. If y'all want to do a meal, the meal train for Miss Gail. Um, also, we're still doing the Docker Drive for Cody and Leslie. Um, I think we're doing above two. Right? Tara's not in here. So. Yeah, it's two and above. Two and above. So we got some over there, but we're doing it for next for this next week too. So y'all, Cody, bring the baby up, man. You and Leslie, bring the baby up. Leslie, you got to tell the story. You got to tell the name story. Here, I'll get you a mic. Uh, Mike one, Mike one. This is Miss Ava. Leslie, tell them the story about the name. <laughs> oh man, God's good. He's so good. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, Amen. Well, we were expecting, and I was 17 weeks pregnant, didn't know, you know, the gender of our baby, or I thought I didn't know. But God's good. He answers prayers. So I'm out for a walk and just having my time with the Lord. And I said, God, you know, just tell me, what am I having? I've got two boys, they're four and five, and a handful. <laughs> and so I was mentally preparing. It's going to be another spate boy, you know. And they're a joy. It's a lot of work. And uh, he said, Leslie, you already know. And uh, so at this point, I'm ball and I'm crying. Can't believe I'm getting my girl that I'm praying for. And I said, okay, well, are you sure? Really? You know, I'm just ecstatic. He says, am I not the God that grants you the desires of your heart? So we, I went home and told Cody my story. He said, I don't believe it. We'll see. <laughs> 20, the 20 week, you know, uh, ultrasound, we'll, we'll see if it's really true kind of thing. Well, that morning we're, we're going to, to the doctor's visit and I've got both boys in the back. We're dropping them off at the babysitter. And, and Cody says, okay, boys, here's your last final say. What is it? And Co of course, Cohen said, it's a, it's a baby sister the entire time. Liam, our oldest, wanted a different brother. <laughs> That's what he said the entire time up until that morning. He said, it's a girl, we're having a baby sister. And uh, so we go to our appointment. And I mean, they start, you know, doing the ultrasound. And of course, it's a girl. And uh, so we were looking at names. And I'm like, God, help me find a name, you know. And and again, it was just laid upon me. Her name should be Ava. It means desire. Noinlin is her middle name. Gift of um, God's gift of love. So that's her name. Oh man, God answers prayers. Amen. Wow. Uh, we're going to answer another prayer next weekend as Connor and Jenner are getting married. Woo! And I would like to invite everybody uh, Sunday. What is the place? I forgot.
area. The venue at Stonebrook Meadows. The oh. venue at Stonebrook Meadows. Twerk and Trent and Dre got married. Twerk and Trent and Dre got married. What time does it start? Five o'clock. I better be there on time. Five o'clock. I want to be there early. Say Saturday. Sunday. Sunday. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um. Also, um, <laughs> the subbership class Wednesday night at six thirty. And was I supposed to announce anything else? Small groups. Small groups. Life, groups. life groups. Life groups tonight. Uh, the um, joy group, um, just older youth, is at Scotty and Vicky's house <laughs> at six thirty. <laughs> They're doing. Um, Finger food potluck thing, and the younger adults are at my house and Tara's house, and we're doing the same. Yeah. The younger group is doing sushi. Yeah. We're doing sushi. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna eat sushi. All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna turn us loose. Uh, go out and be world changers. Amen. Go out and be world changers. You have a purpose. You have a reason. Go get after it. God, I come to you today and I praise you. Wow, all the miracles, Father, all the joy, Father, that, that you are the source of, that you provide, Father.